Our next inductee is in the category of sports. She had a short career but left a lasting legacy in the sport of tennis. In 1953, Maureen Little Mo Connolly was the first woman and only the second person to ever win all four Grand Slam tennis tournaments in one year. And that's a record that still stands today. And as amazing as that was, more amazing, she was only 18 years old when she did it. Let's learn more about Little Mo and her extraordinary career. The year was 1953. Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay became the first explorers to summit Mount Everest. Marlon Monroe graced the cover of the first Playboy issue. Ian Fleming published his first James Bond novel. An American's average annual salary would have been around $3,000. And in the sports world, an 18-year-old Irish American accomplished something that had never been achieved before. Maureen Connolly won the United States Women's Singles Championship, becoming the first woman to win the Australian, French, Wimbledon and United States Championships in a calendar year. The legendary Grand Slam of tennis. Flying into London Airport the other day came 17-year-old Maureen Connolly, already America's lady champion. We were there to welcome her and hear her plans for the tennis season. Now, you're playing at Wimbledon, aren't you? Yes, I'm going to be playing at Wimbledon this year, a big one. Well, what, what, what do you think of your chances? Well, I hope they're good. I'm going to be in there plugging in the final count. Well, <laughs> who knows? She was named Female Athlete of the Year by the Associated Press for three straight years. Connolly's achievements made her the darling of the media and one of the most popular personalities in the United States. The battleship USS Missouri was known as Big Mo for the blistering punishment doled out during sea battles in World War II. Connolly, who stood 5 feet 4 inches and weighed 120 pounds, was dubbed Little Mo for the relentless domination of her opponents during her tennis career. At 19, she defended her Wimbledon championship for a third straight time, and she was set to turn pro later in the year when her stellar tennis career came to a tragic end. Less than a month after the tournament, Connolly was severely injured while riding. She was thrown from her horse, who was startled by a cement truck, and she was pinned between the two, severing muscle and tendon, shattering her right leg. In times of adversity, human nature is tested. She would never again be able to compete in the grueling arena that she had so recently dominated. The legendary General Hannibal said, I will find a way or make one. And the way Mo Connolly found to continue to express her unique talents were many. She was able to share her tremendous gifts as a tennis teacher through a wide range of impressive programs and events in her name. These tournaments and awards continue to motivate and inspire young players. She continued to give insight into the sport with her unique perspective of a world-class athlete. But her greatest achievement came not in the world of tennis. Californian fans wait to see tennis queen Maureen Connolly leave St. Patrick's Church with her bridegroom, Olympic rider Norman Brinker. They were blessed with two daughters, Cindy and Brenda, and raised their children in Dallas, Texas. In 1966, Connolly Brinker was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And on June 21st, 1969, Maureen Connolly Brinker lost her final battle. Her two daughters were 12 and 10, but they responded to the tragedy in the brave fashion that would make their mother proud. It was through her children that the memory of Maureen Connolly would live on. Cindy Brinker would go on to become a ranked tennis player and wrote a book about her mother. 
Little Mo's Legacy and Mother's Lessons, A Daughter's Story. Brenda Brinker graduated from SMU, married and went into advertising. Her family is deeply involved in volunteer work, focusing on children's issues and cancer. To her family, she was a champion of the human spirit. To tennis fans, Little Mo will always be remembered for her spirit and for being the first woman in the Grand Slam Club. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to induct Maureen Little Mo Connolly into the 2017 Irish American Hall of Fame for her contributions to the field of sports. To accept the award for Maureen Connolly is her daughter Cindy Brinker Simmons. We would also like to welcome Brenda Brinker Bottom, who is also here tonight to honor her mother. Wow. <laughs> wow. Bless you. Bless you. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. And what a joy it is to represent the Brinker family in accepting this wonderful, wonderful honor on behalf of my glorious mother, Maureen Conley Brinker. Mom would be thrilled, absolutely thrilled, to receive this special honor tonight. In her very humble manner and with the sparkle that so characterized her, she would quickly thank the Irish American Hall of Fame Committee for selecting her amidst this wonderful group of past recipients and, for, and this year's recipients. This award would mean so much to her. She would also acknowledge the other outstanding eight recipients who have greatly impacted their respective fields of expertise with their extraordinary talents, influence, and passion for their craft. Maureen Catherine Conley was born September 17, 1934, and so sadly, as we saw in the video, passed away from cancer on June 21st, 1969, at the age of 34. My sister Brenda was 10, and I was 12. She also left behind a devoted husband, my late dad, Norman Brinker. On her tombstone is written, Maureen Conley Brinker, a gallant lady, wife, mother, champion. You see, Dad, Brenda, and I thought that was a very fitting and perfect tribute because her humanity was so deep and she loved so well. She and my dad were tremendous partners in life and in business, always supporting each other. Dad cheering on mom's involvement in writing columns for tennis magazines, coaching, promising junior players, and taking art history classes at a local Dallas University, and mom providing strategic and brilliant counsel to dad as he developed a very successful restaurant chain. For Brenda and me, she was an encouraging mom and mentor. Even when she was so sick, she would chaperone some of my school field trips, hit tennis balls with me, and ride with my sister Brenda, who actually tried out for the Olympics. While she had been known to her adoring public in the 1950s as Little Mo, she was simply known to Brenda and me as Little Mom. And what a mom she was. And she also had a cadre of dedicated friends and mentors to so many outside our family circle. I've lived 10 lives, she penned in her book, Forehand Drive. Indeed, she had. How interesting that the French Open finals are this weekend Mom won the French Open in 1953 and 54. At, isn't that an outstanding? <laughs> and what is so amazing is she was only 18 and 19 years old. But despite being the undisputed and reigning world tennis champion from 1951 to 1954, with so many thrilling victories, as was chronicled tonight in that wonderful video, Mom was so quietly humble, it took your breath away. You see, however, what, what Mom accomplished 
off the tennis courts was equally as significant as what she accomplished on the tennis courts. In 1968, she co-founded the Maureen Conley Brinker Tennis Foundation, which is one of the largest private junior tennis foundations in the world today, as it attracts the most elite and talented players ages eight to 12 to compete in our 27 Little Mo tournaments nationally and internationally. Most importantly, in our foundation, we stress good sportsmanship, character development, integrity, and fair play. We are so pleased, isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Parents write to us and say that this foundation has changed their children's and their families' lives. And we are so honored to have Carol Wayman with us, who's our foundation's executive vice president, and she oversees all of our tournaments, and she helps perpetuate mom's legacy. <laughs> ah, ah, but mom was also so proud of her Irish-American ancestry and heritage. She celebrated that ancestry the recognized Irish attributes of strong convictions, excellent communications, dedicated loyalty to family and friends, and a vivacious and charming spirit all define my mother. The grace, resilience, and faith of her Irish roots help propel her to athletic greatness. Ah, but yet they provided her with amazing courage and strength when she faced her toughest opponent, cancer. In closing, I would like to recognize my sister, Brenda Brinkerbottom, her daughter, Conley, and my son, William Simmons. <laughs> who share my mom's glorious honor tonight with me. Brenda's son, Connor, was not able, unfortunately, to attend tonight. But even though Connor, Conley, and William have never met their grandma, Mo, they sense the mighty presence, importance, and influence of their grandmother, just as Brenda and I do. Sports has recorded, yes, it has recorded mom's dominance on the tennis court. But more importantly, her family, friends, and fans have marveled at her humility, compassion, kindness, and selflessness. She was a valiant champion on and off the tennis court. Indeed, mom was a remarkable woman who just happened to be a very good tennis player. So tonight, the Brinker family is heartfeltly grateful for the spectacular recognition of our beloved mom and grandmother by the Irish American Hall of Fame. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Another hand, folks. Thank you to Cindy and the entire family for traveling to help us recognize and celebrate Maureen Connolly.